Assalamu alaikum and a very good day to everyone. This is BAT257 Geotechnics Lecture 5, uh, which is for uh, week 12. Alright, so in this session, I have decided to show you one more example. Uh, I mean, one more uh, problem which is related to uh, lateral earth pressure. Maksudnya dalam uh, lecture session kali ini. Uh, kita akan uh, kita akan masih berbincang mengenai lateral earth pressure okay uh, but before that uh, i would like to summarize what we have learned so far okay jom kita summarize sama-sama apa yang telah you all ataupun kita belajar uh, in the previous four lecture sessions okay let's go straight to the point okay it's just a a quick summary okay all right dalam lecture session uh, yang pertama as you can see here, okay, saya ada bagi satu um, uh, problem, right? And then it looks something like this. Okay, so we have a um, retaining wall, any simple retaining wall. And then uh, belakang ni, uh, retaining wall ini menahan uh, dua lapisan sand, two layers of sand. Okay, then uh, kita ada water table here. And then uh, this retaining wall uh, berada dalam keadaan at rest. Apa itu at rest? Uh, you guys boleh uh, go back and check. Okay, it is in one of the lecture sessions. Okay, so retaining wall ini berada dalam keadaan uh, at rest. All right, dengan two layers of sand. Okay, so lecture session yang kedua for lecture two. All right, uh, it gets a bit more complicated. Dia jadi lebih complicated sedikit je compared dengan yang the first one. Uh, still, um, ada satu, I gave you this um, uh, example, retaining wall macam yang tadi juga. Okay, and then we have two layers of sand, still sand, okay. And then we have, uh, we also have ground water table here. But in this example, uh, friction angle berbeza, ingat tak? The first one, uh, friction, friction angle one, if I'm not mistaken, dalam 30 degree, friction angle two is 35, I'm not sure. Okay, but you can go and track lecture session two. And then uh, in this case, um, uh, dia dalam keadaan active. Okay, ranking active state. Yang tadi at rest kan? Okay, lecture session one at rest. Yang second one, ranking active state. Okay, alright. Itu untuk lecture session kedua. Masih lagi uh, sand. And then lecture session number three ni, uh, we started uh, to check the stability of retaining wall against overturning and sliding okay tapi uh, kita guna kulim ingat tak so i am going to use this pink highlighter okay kita guna kulim all right untuk lecture session nombor 3 kita check stability against overturning and sliding but we use kulim's uh, earth pressure theory Okay, itu dalam lecture session 3. And then dalam lecture session 4, okay, we again, okay, kita sekali lagi check stability retaining wall kita against overturning and sliding. But this time in lecture 4, we use Rankin. Okay? Nampak tak? Alright. So, tadi kulam, sekarang Rankin dalam lecture session uh, nombor 4. So, hopefully by now, you guys can uh, differentiate, Okay? Boleh bezakan uh, kalau design guna kulam macam mana? Sorry, can you see? Okay, kalau design guna kulam uh, theory macam mana? Kalau design guna ranking macam mana? Alright. Okay, and then this is for week uh, 12. Okay, uh, which is lecture 5 yang saya plan nak uh, discuss a bit more. Okay, so but before this, kita always discuss about uh, sand. Okay, and then uh, in reality, you should know, okay, dalam dalam reality sebenar, tanah adalah banyak jenis, right? We learned that before in uh, PAT 203, soil mechanics. So, kita ada sand, and then tak lupa juga, kita ada, kita ada clay. Okay, this is what we will explore. Kita akan explore pasal clay this week. Okay, in lecture 5. Um, dan juga... Uh, kewujudan tensile cracks okay so this is the focus of our uh, lecture this week okay macam mana pula 
kalau tanah kita clay, tanah liat dan uh, pada masa yang sama berlaku tensile cracks. Okay, what is tensile crack? Okay, we will discuss about this uh, kejap lagi. Okay, so kalau tanah kita clay dan berlaku tensile cracks, apa kesannya terhadap uh, lateral earth pressure on the retaining wall? So, itu yang kita nak discuss uh, in this session, dalam session ini. Okay, alright, and um, saya akan bagi dua contoh. Okay, we will do two examples. Alright, so uh, the first one is uh, without surcharge ataupun tanpa surcharge. Okay, and then yang kedua, with surcharge. Dengan surcharge. Apa surcharge? Okay, yang uh, tak ada surcharge macam ni lah. Okay, so we have clay and then we have this simple retaining wall. Yang pak segi ni, a very simple retaining wall. And then this retaining wall is supporting the clay behind it. Tapi tak ada apa-apa surcharge dekat surface uh, clay ni. Uh, at the top surface, at the surface of the clay, uh, tak ada extra surcharge ataupun load ataupun pressure dekat atas ni. Okay. And then uh, dengan surcharge pula, uh, macam ni lah. Okay, still uh, sama macam tadi, clay. And then this is our simple retaining wall. Tapi ada surcharge. Maksudnya ada kita, mungkin kita construct some structure here. Okay. Okay, so kita ada load extra lah di atas permukaan clay ini. So, uh, this will affect how you calculate uh, your lateral earth, uh, earth pressure. Okay. Uh, tanpa surcharge, dengan ada surcharge, akan ada beza sedikit daripada cara pengiraan. Alright. So, uh, let's go to the first uh, example, which is this one. Yang apa tu? <coughs> Yang without surcharge. This one. Okay. Right. Let's do this. Okay, guys. So, uh, this is the first example, as I promised you just now. Uh, this is without surcharge. Okay. Tanpa ada load extra dekat atas ni. Alright. So, I'm going to highlight here. Okay. Sorry. Uh, okay. Kalau kita tengok um, soalan ni ada retaining wall. Okay, so this is the retaining wall, and the retaining wall ni dia support uh, dia menahan uh, soft saturated clay. Okay, dekat belakang retaining wall, behind the retaining wall ni ada clay, soft saturated clay, and then this is the unit weight, sixteen point five. And then the uh, friction angle is a zero and Cu. What is Cu? Cu is um, undrained shear strength. Okay, so uh, Cu is undrained shear strength. Tapi kalau perasan, C is not given, isn't it? C, um, which is for the cohesion. Okay, so lukan dia akan bagi uh, C, value, cohesion. So, apa value cohesion? How to find this? Okay, so I hope you still remember this um, this formula. Okay, so this formula, uh, this is from the Mohr circle, uh, which is uh, shear strength equals to C, uh, or cohesion, plus uh, normal stress tangent friction angle. Okay, and then uh, in this case, our friction angle is zero, isn't it? So. Uh, therefore, we know that this part here, okay, I'm going to highlight this, wait, please bear with me, okay, this one, since uh, friction angle is zero, therefore this portion is equals to zero, right, therefore we got uh, shear strength equals to cohesion, so uh, the given uh, unrange shear strength value is 10. So, 10 equals to C. Means C uh, cohesion equals to 10 uh, kilonewton per meter square. Means C, the value of C uh, is equal to uh, shear strength. The value of shear strength when friction angle is uh, 0. 
All right, so we need all of this in uh, our uh, calculation. Okay, before that, um, I promised to uh, explain a bit to you guys on tensile crack. Okay, tadi kita ada sebut pasal uh, where to write. Okay, tensile crack. Okay, guys, uh, tensile crack. What is what is it? Okay, uh, I will explain this in my own words. Okay. Uh, tensile crack ni uh, Okay, let's focus on the uh, This figure on the left first Okay, imagine ini kita punya uh, Simple retaining wall And then this is retaining wall is supporting uh, clay dekat sini Alright, and clay ni uh, Moist, right? Permeability of clay is low Betul? Ingat tak dulu kita study uh, I mean, we learn in soil mechanics the particle size of clay is small okay uh, and then uh, the pores ataupun voids di antara liang-liang uh, apa tu clay itu dia tak uh, continuous okay so uh, ini menunjukkan yang clay itu adalah uh, low permeability lah alright okay low permeability okay alright so uh, lama kelamaan air yang ada dalam liang-liang uh, uh, clay ni air yang terdapat in between the voids between uh, in in the voids between the clay particles ni lama lama kelamaan dia akan mengering betul it dries up okay bila dia mengering akan berlaku crack okay kering kekurangan air so, uh, crack akan berlaku. Bila crack ni berlaku, uh, akan terdapat uh, rekahan di sini di mana uh, clay ni is not in contact with the retaining wall anymore. Bila, sorry saya punya drawing ni tak berapa nak clear. Okay, I will draw again. Okay, I will draw again. Okay, so this is your retaining wall. The simple retaining wall. Okay. Bila uh, lama kelamaan clay ni mengering, okay, so rekahan ataupun crack akan berlaku uh, dalam jarak beberapa meter daripada uh, ataupun beberapa uh, distance, uh, distance tertentu daripada permukaan. Okay, so this is our clay. So uh, this is what we call uh, tensile crack. Okay. So, ruangan ni adalah crack. So, means clay ni uh, tidak lagi bersentuhan dengan dinding uh, retaining wall ni. Ni macam ruang kosong lah. Okay. Dan uh, distance ni kita boleh kira lah. Okay. So, we can uh, we can uh, calculate this uh, distance. Kita namakan dia Z. Z note lah kan. Okay. So, ni tensile crack berlaku. Okay, ada uh, apa jarak daripada permukaan sampai jarak tertentu di mana crack akan berlaku dan uh, clay behind the retaining wall tak akan lagi bersentuhan. Means tak akan lagi memberikan pressure dekat the retaining wall ni. Okay, but yang di bawah ni uh, still uh, bersentuhan lah. Okay, so this is tensile crack. Alright, this is tensile crack. Okay, now back to our, uh, I hope you are clear with this, okay. So, now berbalik kepada kita punya uh, soalan tadi. Okay, ini retaining wall kita and uh, the height is 6 meter, alright. And then, uh, first, we have to uh, determine maximum depth of the tensile crack. Maksudnya, kita kena cari kedalaman maksimum tensile crack tu. Okey, yang ni. Maksudnya kita kita kena cari ini, distance z z node ni. Okey, berapa uh, jaraknya daripada from the surface daripada permukaan, berapa maksimum dia dia akan uh, crack. Okey, so this distance. So, uh, how to do this? Okey. How to do this is we can use uh, this formula. Okay, so we can use uh, this formula. Okay, let's look at the first formula. Z note ni, ataupun uh, maximum uh, depth 
of the tensile crack neck, we can use this formula, which is 2 uh, Cu uh, over uh, unit weight of clay. Okay, sorry. So this equals to 2 Cu is 10, right? Divide by unit weight of um, clay is 16.5. And from here, you will get 1.212 uh, meter. So basically, this is the answer. Okay. Uh, there is uh, one more um, formula that you can use. Okay, di mana um, apa tu? You have uh, you will get the same answer. Okay, sama je. Kalau you guna that, tapi dalam keadaan di mana friction friction angle is zero lah. When friction angle is zero, then either you use this formula, sama ada you guna formula yang atas ni, ataupun you guna yang kat bawah ni. Okay, uh, you will get the same answer. Okay, so let's try. Let's try the bottom one. Okay, two uh, C cohesion. Cohesion macam kita discuss tadi dalam keadaan um, friction angle is zero. Okay, so cohesion value is equal to the unrained shear strength value. So sama, which is ten. Ten. Okay, divide by. Unit weight of clay is uh, 16.5 uh, multiplied by the square root of Ka. So, macam mana nak dapatkan Ka? How to get Ka? Ka equals to... Okay, guys. Untuk ranking. Okay. Uh, untuk ranking. So, uh, this is the formula. So, this is for ranking. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. This is for ranking. Okay, untuk dapatkan Ka, uh, 1 minus sin friction angle divided by 1 plus uh, sine, sorry, sine friction angle. And then you will get 1. Okay, the answer is 1 for Ka. So, what kita punya friction angle is uh, 0. Okay, so you substitute 1 here. Okay, so you will get the same answer, which is 1.212 meter. All right, so uh, these are the answer for maximum depth of the tensile crack. Maksudnya, uh, kedalaman kedalaman maksimum uh, kalau kita ukur daripada surface di mana tensile crack ni boleh berlaku ialah dalam kes ini is 1.212 meter. Okay, so this is... Uh, the uh, maximum depth of uh, the tensile crack. So this is the answer. All right. Okay, guys. So let's move on to the um, uh, apa? part B. Okay. So Alan Young uh, part B. Uh, now uh, we have to determine the total active force per unit length of the wall before this tensile crack occurs. Maksudnya, okay, I'm gonna highlight this part. Uh, okay. So, kita kena kira total active force per unit length of the wall. Maksudnya, kita kena kira in short, okay, kita boleh tulis PA dalam bentuk yang ringkas. So, all of this, total active force per unit length of the wall uh, kita boleh namakan dia sebagai PA. It's very short and easier to to um, to say ataupun to to write. Okay, kita kena kira PA sebelum tensile crack berlaku. Okay, maksudnya uh, force. Okay, force yang bertindak ke atas uh, retaining wall kita ni berapa force yang bertindak uh, ke atas uh, retaining wall kita ni sebelum tensile crack berlaku sebelum ini berlaku berapakah um, PA tersebut ok so how um, to do this ok uh, it's very familiar to you we did this so many times before kita dah buat step-step ni dalam uh, even dalam lecture-lecture session sebelum ni ok kita st start dengan uh, can you see? Alright. At Z 
uh, equals to zero meter. You still remember Z ni um, distance measured from uh, the surface. Okay, so look at lagi. Okay, so in a very simpler form, so our retaining wall height is six meter, right? Okay, so Z is this one. Okay, measured from the surface Z the ukur uh, de surface. So at Z equals to zero meter. So kita punya vertical effective stress. Okay, vertical effective stress yang datang daripada arah vertical daripada atas equals to uh, gamma z right so uh, this is equals to zero okay so gamma kita 16.5 okay tapi z since our z is zero so the answer is zero and then uh, for Rankine's okay Rankine's uh, active earth pressure equals to uh, vertical effective stress times uh, or multiply by ka minus 2c tangent sorry tangent 45 minus friction angle divided by 2 all right so, uh, so let's plug in all the numbers. It's very simple. Okay, it's very simple. Don't, jangan stress. It's very simple. So you just follow uh, the formula. Apa yang dia minta, kita plug in all the numbers. Okay, so vertical effective stress ni, yang ni is zero. Okay, our Ka tadi, kita dah measure Ka, remember? Which is here. So our Ka in this case is one. Okay, and then will become like this okay so you plug in all the numbers uh, 2 multiplied by uh, C is uh, 10 tangent 45 minus friction angle is 0 remember 0 divided by 2 so you plug in this into your calculator and then uh, you will get negative 20 kilonewton per meter square yeah so this is Rankine's uh, active earth pressure. Okay, Rankine's active earth pressure. Uh, well, bila Z equals to zero, means dekat permukaan lah. Okay, and then next. Okay, okay. At Z, come on guys, you did this before. Okay, cuba tengok balik dalam lecture, lecture yang lepas. Okay, at Z equals to six meter the same we will repeat the same thing okay so our vertical effective stress is gamma z right and dalam case ni kita akan ada value lah so kita punya gamma tadi is 16.5 okay and our z is six so therefore your vertical effective stress equals to okay equals to uh, 99 kilonewton per meter square and then you continue with Rankine's active earth pressure equals to uh, vertical effective stress multiply uh, with Ka minus 2C um, tangent, sorry, tangent, can you see, 45 minus friction angle divided by 2. Okay, and then... And you will get um, 79 kilonewton per meter square. So, what is the next step, remember? Okay, the next step is to, um, to plot the graph. Okay, kita, kita plot graph. Okay guys, so we plug the graph. Sebelum tu, uh, to avoid from uh, confusion, untuk tak confuse, saya uh, tabulatkan, saya masukkan all the values in this table. Okay, we know at uh, z equals to zero. Okay, it's our uh, Rankine's uh, active pressure is negative twenty. Okay, see from here, z zero. 
uh, Rankin's active earth pressure is negative 20 okay and then below Z is 6 our okay our Rankin's active earth pressure is 79 kilonewton per meter square so daripada sini just masukkan dalam uh, kita punya graph alright um, so uh, kita ada satu je uh, graph sebab kita tak ada pore water pressure okay so um, as usual uh, you draw the axis axis ni uh, untuk uh, Rankin's active earth pressure and then uh, yang ke bawah ni is uh, Z lah okay so we know that at Z equals to sorry ini adalah zero kan okay at Z equals to zero uh, Rankin's active earth pressure is negative 20 so dia akan ke sana lah okay and then when Z equals to bawah sini 6 Okay, uh, kita punya Rankin's active earth pressure is 79 and then uh, ini adalah Z node yang uh, kita kira di bahagian A tadi. Okay, di mana maximum uh, depth tensile crack tu boleh berlaku sampai uh, 1.212 meter sahaja di bawah permukaan. Uh, di bawah permukaan. Okay, so this is our Z node. Okay, and then we will use this in our uh, next calculation. Okay, sebenarnya sekarang kita nak kena cari apa tadi eh? Okay, selepas dapat semua ni uh, Sorry eh, sebab saya shifting everywhere, all over the place Okay, so kita nak cari uh, PA Sebelum, okay, PA Ataupun nama panjang dia Total active force per unit length of the wall Before Okay, sebelum Tensile crack berlaku So, how to do that is um, Sorry how to do that is uh, kita tambahkan uh, area di bawah graph ni okay so uh, this is area area 1 okay area 1 and then this is area number 2 okay sorry i'm going to use rat okay so pa sorry okay pa equals to area 1 plus area 2 okay so area 1 is okay guys so um, area 1 kita guna uh, rumus uh, triangle okay half uh, and then top Ni, the one side is 1.212 and then dia punya tinggi dia negative 20 so negative 20 negative 20 negative tu include sekali dalam uh, pengiraan okay okay so this is area 1 and this is area 2 setengah okay tapak is this one isn't it okay how to get this okay for area 2 is 6 minus 1.212 kan okay total height is 6 kita nak dapat height ni sahaja so kita tolak lah 1.212 alright so saya tulis kat sini and then 79 is the height so from here ok when you do um, the calculation therefore PA equals to ok guys so um, you will get PA equals to 177 uh, kN per meter Okay, total active force per unit length of the wall before the tensile crack occurs. Sebelum berlakunya tensile crack, kita punya PA is 177 kN per, uh, per meter. Alright, I hope you get the same answer as mine. Okay guys, uh, let's move on to uh, the next, I mean... Uh, question i mean the the part c question part c sekarang uh, we have to determine um apa tu uh, total force per unit length of the wall okay or pa but this time is uh after tensile crack sorry after tensile crack occurs tadi kita kena kira pa before pa sebelum tensile crack occurs sekarang Kita kena kira PA setelah, okay, after 
Uh, setelah berlakunya tensile crack, okay, berapakah PA kita? Okay, force yang acting on the wall. Okay, so how to calculate? Basically, you can use the same, um, the same graph. Sorry, eh? Saya so, shift ke graph ni kejap. Okay, you can refer. Awak boleh refer graph yang sama yang awak lukis tadi untuk untuk apa tu menjimatkan masa. Alright, so bila tensile crack berlaku, okay, saya lukis sikit eh, hopefully you can see. Bila tensile crack berlaku yang saya cakap tadi, crack tu akan berlaku uh, di sini, okay, saya lukis di sini. Okay, so this is the crack. Okay, okay, let's imagine ini adalah apa permukaan uh, retaining wall awak, okay. The surface of uh, the back surface of your retaining wall, retaining wall yang bersentuhan permukaan ini dia bersentuhan dengan clay kat belakang ni tadi belakang ni clay kan ok bila tensile crack occur dia akan occur sebanyak 1.212 meter 1.212 meter daripada surface ok bermaksudnya akan ada gap ok so this is the crack ataupun gap maksudnya this portion clay yang portion ni tak akan lagi bersentuhan dengan uh, apa tu wall ni ok itu cara saya nak explain lah ok to you itu cara ini saya, cara saya nak explain untuk uh, uh, kepada awak tanah ni dia tak akan bersentuhan lagi dengan permukaan uh, wall ni so dia tak memberikan any force anymore dia tak dia tak mengenakan sebarang uh, daya lagi terhadap permukaan permukaan wall ni sebanyak 1.212 meter from the surface ok setelah crack ni berlaku maksudnya untuk kira therefore untuk kira PA ataupun total force per unit length of the wall selepas tensile crack berlaku kita hanya refer kepada area 2 ni sahaja betul ok tadi before crack berlaku kita refer kepada area 1 and 2 kita kira both tapi selepas crack tu berlaku kita refer area 2 sahaja I mean kita akan kira force uh, uh, berdasarkan area 2 sahaja ok sebab di bahagian ini as I explain to you just now dia tak akan memberikan lagi force kepada wall ok so it's pretty straightforward sangat straightforward so you just kira guna formula triangle lah Okay guys, so um, bila kita consider area 2 sahaja, okay, uh, only area, tak, sorry, area 2, okay, so you kira guna formula triangle and then you will get uh, PA equals to 189.13 kN per meter. Ini setelah ataupun selepas dan sakrat berlaku. Alright? Okay guys, um, kalau lah, okay kalau lah dalam soalan tu, ataupun kalau lah you are us, anda, anda disuruh untuk kira uh, resultant, ingat tak? Maksudnya location or the resultant. Okay guys, sorry sekali lagi. Uh, kalau lah uh, anda diminta Okay, you are asked to uh, calculate the location of the resultant ni. Maksudnya PA ni, sekarang you dah dapat PA value, right? Okay, so you got the force which is 189.13 kN per meter. Tapi, kalau soalan suruh kira dekat mana? Okay, dekat mana? Okay, so this is um, PA after tensile crack. 189.13 kN per meter ni, where? Where? Okay, dekat mana dia? Dekat, is it here at the bottom? Ataupun dekat atas ni ke? Is it PA here? Ataupun dekat sini? Or somewhere in between? Where? Okay, so macam mana nak kira? Uh, kita dah buat before this. We did this before in um, uh, lecture 1 and 2. Okay. So, kalau... Um, kalau segitiga ni, okay, we know that, that, sorry, that 
equals to uh, since this is this is triangle and then force uh, PA is uh, pushing on your wall so this is your any any uh, the surface of your retaining wall again color say Lucas okay okay so this is your retaining wall so this is the surface of your retaining wall so PAU is somewhere here okay pushing on the wall so this bakam benda ni adalah segitiga so PA ini is uh, kalau daripada bawah kalau measure from the bottom of the retaining wall it is one third from uh, the total height okay one third from uh, the total uh, height of uh, the triangle so maksudnya can you see okay one third ataupun satu per tiga daripada total this this distance 4.788 meter sorry Okay, satu per tiga daripada 4.788 meter which equals to Okay, so <clears throat> uh, the answer is uh, 1.596 meter measured from the bottom of the wall Okay, so this is PA So, look at it Okay, ini untuk uh, PA after Okay, after tensile crack yang kita dapat tadi uh, PA is 189.13 kN per meter Dan dia bertindak at Ni distance ni Sorry, this distance here Okay, let me highlight with orange So this distance Okay uh, Equals to 1.9 uh, sorry 1.596 meter measured from the bottom of the wall it is equal to bawah okay so dekat sini lah PA tu bertindak alright okay so that's uh, that's it for uh, the first example which is uh, without surcharge Maksudnya tak ada apa tu? Sorry, tak ada any uh, extra force uh, on the surface. Okay, so that is the first example without surcharge. So now let's move on to the second example, uh, the one with surcharge. Okay, guys. So we move on to the second example. Di mana um, Kita punya problem ni ada surcharge. Q is uh, surcharge. Okay. Uh, this is okay. Surcharge. Okay. Ada extra surcharge uh, on the uh, on the surface. Okay. So again, uh, we have this simple retaining wall. The height is four meter, and unit weight is fifteen. Friction angle twenty six. Cohesion um, is eight per meter square okay uh, this is a frictionless wall okay dalam soalan dia bagi tahu ini adalah frictionless wall and then you have to remember guys please remember untuk bila dia cakap dia frictionless wall maksudnya <coughs> excuse me maksudnya kita akan refer to Rankin all the time okay sebab ingat ingatkan kita punya um, uh, kita belajar before this Rankin, uh, they assume, okay, Rankin, eh, they assume uh, tiada geseran di antara uh, wall ni dengan tanah dekat belakang dia. Okay, so the wall uh, is assumed to be frictionless. So this is always Rankin. Kalau Coulomb, okay, sedikit revision. Kalau Coulomb, Coulomb take into account the friction between uh, the wall and the soil behind it. Okay, untuk Rankin, Rankin assume wall is frictionless. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to show everything. But basically, step dia sama macam yang ada, sorry, sama macam yang tak ada surcharge tadi. Ada sedikit different je. Iaitu dekat mana kita nak cari Z node tu. Okay, okay I'll show you later. So, uh, soalan ni 
they ask us to determine the active force PA after tensile crack occurs. So, maksudnya kita kena kira PA after tensile crack occurs. Okay? Uh, so, it is the same. Okay, kita can start macam biasa. Okay. Uh, okay. We will start with at. Sorry. Okay, guys, we will start at. Uh, can you see? At z equals to zero meter. Okay. So, um, at z equals to zero meter, okay, what is the um, vertical effective stress? It equals to uh, gamma z, right? Okay. But, however, okay, please pay attention. However, we have surcharge here. Dekat, dekat z zero ni, maksudnya z zero tu means dekat surface lah. Okay, Z0 is referring to the surface. Okay, surface of the soil. Okay, kita ada surcharge, which is 10 kN per meter square. So, kita kena tambah lah dekat sini. 10 kN per meter square, guys. Okay, alright. So, therefore, the vertical effective stress equals to, yang ni memang 0 lah, kan? Sebab kita punya Z0. 0 plus 10, so therefore, vertical effective stress equals to 0 kN per meter square. Okay. Alright. So, and then kita teruskan macam biasa, kita cari uh, Rankine's active earth pressure equals to, okay, uh, vertical effective stress tadi ni, kita darab dengan Ka minus 2C. Kan, tangent 45 minus friction angle divided by 2. Okay. Kita cari dulu Ka ni. Okay. Where Ka equals to. Okay, so Ka. Okay, ini Ka, formula Ka untuk rankin. 1 minus sine friction, friction angle divided by 1 plus sine friction angle. So, you plug in all the numbers. And then you will get Ka equals to 0 0.39. Okay. Lepas dapat Ka. Masukkan Ka ni. Into this formula here. Okay. So this equals to. Okay. So once you uh, do the calculation. Okay. So you will get uh, Rankine's uh, active uh, earth pressure equals to negative 6.09 kN per meter square at z equals to 0 meter. And then we continue with, okay, at z equals to, berapa? Uh, height of retaining wall is 4, kan? Okay, so z equals to 4 meter. Okay, so the same thing. Um, vertical, okay, I hope you pay attention. Vertical effective stress equals to okay sekarang kita nak tahu uh, let me highlight with red I mean let me use red pen kita nak tahu force dekat layer ni dekat these layers force uh, ataupun stresses yang ditanggung oleh this layer so means kita kena tambahkan vertical effective stress daripada atas ni tadi at z equals to zero dengan this layer kan we discussed this before, right? In lecture 1 and lecture 2. Okay. So, this equals to, uh, sorry, 10 plus gamma z. Okay. Equals to 10 ni yang surcharge tadi tu lah. Uh, ataupun vertical effective stress at z sama dengan kosong. Kan? Kita dapat 10 tadi. Betul? Alright, so 10 plus gamma is 15, z is 4. So therefore, vertical effective stress at z bersama dengan 4 is 70 kN per meter square. So now, let's move on to, okay, uh, 
Rankin's active earth pressure equals to vertical effective stress times Ka minus yang tadi itulah 2C tangent 45 minus friction angle divided by 2 okay so um, masukkan all the values in this formula and then you will get okay guys so uh, at z uh, equals to 4 meter uh, you will get uh, Rankine's active earth pressure equals to 17.3 kilonewton per meter square now let's draw the graph the next step is drawing the graph okay 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 guys so um uh, before as usual sebelum kita i mean sebelum saya uh, every time before i draw this graph i will uh, tabulate this uh, the values yang mana kita dapat daripada calculation tadi saya akan masukkan dalam jadual to avoid confusion so we know that at z uh, equals to zero kita punya rankin's active uh, Earth pressure is negative 6.09. Ini kita dapat daripada calculation tadi. And uh, at Z equals to 4, Rankine's active earth pressure is 17.3. So uh, then uh, as usual, you draw the axis first. Okay, ni axis ni, I'm pointing to the right ni adalah uh, Rankine's active earth pressure. Uh, and then I'm pointing downwards is uh, the Z measured from the surface. Okay, so bila you plot, okay, this is negative 6.09, so this is 17.3, okay, and then you'll get this. This is the graph that you'll get. Okay, now, dalam soalan uh, ni, soalan menyuruh kita kira, sorry, PA after tensile crack occurs. Means kita just nak kira area 2 sahaja, kan? Okay, remember in the first uh, example just now? So, this is area 1. This is area 2. Okay. Tensile crack akan berlaku dekat sini. Okay. Kalau dia berlaku, dia akan berlaku dekat sini. Okay. Dekat sini. Crack ni. So, ni dia punya gap ni. Okay. Uh, and then dengan kedalaman Z. Uh, sama dengan, uh, sorry, Z note. Okay. Z note. Pada kedalaman ini. Uh, so, kita nak kena kira PA uh, after tensile crack occur. Maksudnya kita akan consider um, area 2 sahajalah. We will just count or we will just calculate area 2. Area 2 adalah bersamaan dengan PA after tensile crack occurs. Okay. Inilah yang membezakan. Okay. So, uh, please focus. Please keep on focusing. Sebab ini uh, pengiraan Z ini akan membezakan di antara yang ada surcharge. Macam ni. Dengan tadi yang tak ada surcharge. Okay. Yang ni. Okay. Ini yang tadi. Ini yang tak ada surcharge. Okay. Dan ini yang ada surcharge. Bila ada surcharge ni. Okay. Kita tak kira Z note ni. Sorry. I, I shift all over the place. Z note ni kita tak kira dengan formula tadi tu. Ingat tak formula ni? Okay. Ingat tak? Ini. Z note equals to uh, C. Divide by unit weight of soil. Multiply uh, by square root of Ka. Okay. Bila ada surcharge, okay, saya lukis supaya awak nampak dan ingat. Okay, ingat eh. Okay, please, please bear in, please uh, remember or please bear in mind. Bila kita ada surcharge, Q ni surcharge lah. Okay, kita tak kira Z note guna formula ni. Kita dah tak kira guna ni. Tapi kita guna kadaran. Kita guna ratio. So, ada kalau ada surcharge, kita akan guna uh, ratio approach lah saya namakan dia ratio approach which is macam ni ok guys so inilah uh, ratio approach uh, yang saya cakap tadi ok so ratio approach ni is uh, macam ni very simple uh, you don't have to memorize you don't have to memorize the formula ok so um Okay, we have two triangle. Satu di sini. Okay, and then the second one is this one. So now we want to find Z note. Okay, so kalau distance ini, distance ini Z note, maksudnya distance yang bawah ni adalah 4 minus Z note, betul? Okay, kalau ini Z note, ini adalah 4 tolak 
z no distance ni okey so kita buat kadaran lah uh, okey i think you understand this this is really basic uh, but i will explain but i will explain briefly okey tinggi ni the height of this small triangle is 6.09 okey so kita tulis 6.09 over dia punya width dia dia punya lebar dia is z no betul sama dengan yang ni pula kita buat kadaran okey kita kadaran height yang bawah ni height untuk this triangle here is 17.3 uh, divide by uh, dia punya width width of uh, this triangle is 4 tolak z not lah kan ok so once dapat ni so you can uh, buat operation lah uh, I'm not going to show here because this is very simple ok if you don't get the answer if you don't get z no equals to 1.04 please um, let me know ok so you do the calculation then you can dapat z no equals to 1.04 meter ok so from there ok 1.04 ok so that z no equals to 1.04 meter so daripada sini kita boleh kira lah uh, we can calculate um, sorry I'm going to use rat we can calculate um, uh, active force per unit length of the wall PA uh, after sorry after okay guys so um, for this one PA after tensile crack occurs is kita considerkan uh, apa kita kira area untuk apa ni yang area tu sajalah okay so half okay times 4 minus 1.04 okay this is basic math 4 tolak 1.04 lah okay sebab kita nak tahu yang nombor 2 ni and then dia punya height is 17.3 so if you, you do it right you will get PA equals to approximately 25.6 uh, kilonewton per meter alright so um yeah that's all um sama juga uh, i'm not going to show here because i show you guys already in the first example uh, kalau dia tanya before okay yang ini dia tanya pa after kan after tensile crack maksudnya you consider uh, area tu sahaja kalau dia tanya juga before tensile crack occurs maksudnya you kena kira both lah uh area 1 plus area 2 macam tadi macam example uh, the first example ok kalau disuruh kira uh, location of the resultant pun uh, kira lah macam biasa ok measure from the bottom of the surface ok ok guys so we are uh, approaching the end um, of lecture 5 the penghujung uh, lecture 5 uh, and then I have um, another summary for you. Summary untuk uh, lecture 5 ni lah. Alright, so uh, what I can see, there are two uh, important uh, points that you have to understand, you have to memorize. The first one is, um, you have to know, I mean, you have to remember uh, uh, clay, uh, a retaining wall supporting uh, clay here and without surcharge kalau tak ada surcharge ni untuk cari z node tu maksudnya kedalaman uh, tens tensile crack yang akan berlaku kalau kita ukur daripada permukaan ni ok z node ni ok nak kira z node ni untuk yang tak ada surcharge tak ada extra load dekat atas ni kita guna formula tu je Okay, you you have uh, you can you have to remember that we have to use uh, formula lah. So I will name this formula approach lah again. You don't have to you don't have to memorize the formula. Okay, kalau saya tanya pun, you will always be given in the question. Okay, ini kan diberi. Tapi you have to remember, jangan tertukar. Kalau yang tak ada without ni tanpa. Okay, yang tanpa surcharge kosong atas ni. Kita nak cari z node ni. Kedalaman ni in meter, kita guna formula. 
Okay. Tapi kalau uh, with surcharge, dengan surcharge, surcharge ni extra load uh, on the surface of uh, the clay. Okay. Uh, untuk cari Z node ni. Okay. Untuk cari kedalaman tensile crack yang mungkin akan berlaku ni. Kita guna ratio approach yang saya baru tunjuk tadi dalam uh, example 2. Okay. Jangan tertukar. Alright. Tak ada surcharge. Guna formula. Ada surcharge. Guna kadaran. Okay. So that's the first one. The first important point uh, for this lecture session. And the second one. Uh, ini yang kita nampak tadi bila kita buat calculation tu. Um, kalau kita diminta untuk kira. Uh, uh, if we are asked to calculate PA before tensile crack. So kita kena. Uh, apa tu? Tambah. Area 1 and 2. Both areas. Okay. Uh, inclusive of the negative. Ini kan dia negative kan. So termasuklah negative. Masuk dalam ni. Okay. Kalau. Um, uh, apa tu. Kalau kita diminta untuk kira. PA. Uh, after. Tensile crack. Hanya area 2 sahaja. Yang kita consider. Sebab apa? Sebab saya dah explain tadi. Bila crack ni berlaku dekat sini. Okay, ni crack ni. So, ini adalah gap tau. Okay, this is my way. My way to explain this. So, ini adalah gap. Uh, or crack. Okay. Dan soil ni, dia takkan push uh, wall surface dekat sini. Dekat kedalaman ni. Okay. So, sebab tu kita tak ambil kira uh, apa tu area satu ni. Kita just ambil kira area dua je. Sebab area dua ni Soil masih bersentuhan. Okay. Clay ni masih bersentuhan dengan permukaan soil dekat belakang ni. Uh, sorry, permukaan retaining wall dekat belakang ni. Sebab tu kita ambil kira area 2 sahaja. Okay. Sebab ni dah berlaku crack kan. Okay. Dia dah gap. So, dia tak dia tak push lah. Tak push lah dah on, on the wall pada kedalaman setakat ni. Okay. Tapi bawah ni masih ada tanah yang uh, clay tu akan still put pressure akan still press uh, retaining wall ni so sebab tu kita after tensile ok after tensile kita just uh, kira area 2 sahaja alright so I I really hope that you guys start to tukar ok so uh, so those are the two important points untuk um, apa tu as uh, lecture 5 Okay, so uh, I think that's all guys for lateral earth pressure, topik besar kita, lateral earth pressure. So remember we have two uh, big topics. The first one is uh, lateral earth pressure yang kita tengah tengah discuss sampai lah session, uh, lecture session 5 ni, lecture 5 ni. Okay, from lecture 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, kita discuss about lateral earth pressure. Okay. Uh, and then uh, the remaining two weeks uh, after this inshallah we will uh, explore a little bit on uh, slope stability okay so um, that's all for me if you need anything if you need any help if you want to discuss please feel free to let me know okay jangan malu-malu jangan segan-segan uh, please, please feel free uh, to, to let me know. Alright. Uh, thank you guys for your time. Uh, Assalamualaikum. And uh, have a nice day. Bye-bye.